Good morning and welcome to worship on this second Sunday after Pentecost. Each Sunday we now have abbreviated services of Holy Communion indoors at 8.30 and 10 a.m. Please go to holytrinitylynchburg.org or call the church office to make reservations for those worship services. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship during the prelude.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. All-powerful God, in Jesus Christ you turned death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The small wooden sign available for purchase in a gift shop was generating more than a few chuckles and comments from passers-by. The sign read, Friends welcome, relatives by appointment only. The simple sign captured the oft unspoken truth that that friends are sometimes easier to deal with than family. One has to wonder, in light of our gospel reading this morning, If Jesus of Nazareth would have purchased such a friends, welcome, relatives by, appointment only sign, had it been on display 2,000 years ago in a touristy boutique on the dusty streets of Nazareth. Jesus was returning to his hometown in the early phase of his ministry. And it's clear from the size and frenzy of the crowds pressing in on him that his reputation has preceded him. He has been baptized by John in the Jordan River, endured 40 days of testing in the wilderness, called disciples to follow him, and is already driving out unclean spirits, healing the sick, and eating with sinners. He is stirring up such such hope and excitement and yearning in people's hearts that, that they just can't leave him alone. Needless to say, this state of affairs is more than alarming to both his family and the religious authorities. 
Jesus' mother and siblings arrive on the crowded scene outside the house intending to stage an intervention. Mortified by neighborhood rumors that Jesus has gone out of his mind, they hope to restrain him. The scribes have come down from Jerusalem to investigate this new teacher, whom they pronounce to be an evil-possessed threat. While it may be easy for us to write off these people who accuse Jesus of insanity and demon possession, it's important to keep in mind that neither Jesus' family nor the Jerusalem religious folk are evil or ill-intentioned. They are earnest people dedicated to maintaining stability and peace in both the domestic and the religious spheres. They just want to keep things under control and respectable. Respectability, however, is not the way Jesus is portrayed here. He comes across as harsh, austere, and impatient, Instead of responding compassionately to the scribes, he shreds their arguments with clever parables. Instead of going out to reassure his mother and siblings, he rejects their intervention and, and publicly disowns their claims on his life, trading them in for a new family of his own definition. This is not a soft, cuddly Jesus. This is not the Jesus who affirms our sense of order, our preferred boundaries, and our spiritual comfort zone. This is not the Jesus who makes our life decisions less painful or less costly. This Jesus scandalizes his hometown and creates quite a scene. Outside the house, stand the insiders, the family, the religious folk, the pious, the careful. They think they have God all figured out and pinned down. Inside the house sit the outsiders, the misfits, the rejects, the tax collectors, the prostitutes. They're not interested in theological dogma or pious pronouncements. They just need love. And they seem to have found it in this man, Jesus of Nazareth, who heals the sick and feeds the hungry. There he sits in the midst of them, smack dab in the center of the sick, the outcast, the thrown away, the hungry, the unorthodox, the unwashed, there he sits in full-blown Jewish mystic healer and prophet mode, saying, this is my family. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Truth tellers make us uncomfortable. Prophetic voices disturb our creeds, our customs, and our stubborn particularities, prejudices, and biases. We don't tend to handle it well when we are called out for falling short of doing the will of God. It is an inconvenient truth. In order to tame the message, we may malign it or seek to kill the messenger. Jesus was well aware that prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. He was not going for cosmetic change on the surface. He was dividing the house. He was burning things down. He was going for deep institutional and systemic change. He was going for transformation. He was giving witness to the reality that for him and God's vision for the world, outside was in and inside was out. Imagine what it must have felt like to be inside the house with Jesus that day. 
in our own way, each of us knows the, the hunger for a sense of belonging, to have someone safe and loving to whom to belong. Regardless of our circumstances, we all know what it's like to yearn for someone who can hold all of who we are and love us still without flinching. That's exactly what Jesus does for the crowds that day in Nazareth. He invites them in just as they are, asks them to stay, and makes them family. That's exactly what our risen Lord does for us in the word, the bath, and the meal. He meets us where we are and makes us family makes us children of the forgiving and grace-filled God whose love is revealed on the cross, whose love in Jesus the Christ wins the ultimate victory over evil, death, and the grave. As we consider today's gospel reading, Jesus does indeed divide the house, but given his mission and ministry, it's doubtful that there's a friend's welcome, relatives by appointment only sign hanging on the living room wall. He doesn't divide the house to make us homeless. He divides it to rebuild it, to make it more spacious, more welcoming, more inclusive, and more beautiful. For as the Apostle Paul wrote, there is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Our Lord's house is a house of healing for the whole world. And we, as church, are called, empowered, and sent to be a part of that healing by doing God's will as sisters and brothers in the family of God. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of wholeness, we pray for your church throughout the world. Unify us in service of the gospel that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. 
Lord, in your mercy. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation, for gardens, waterways, and creatures near to us, and diverse forms of life that remain unseen. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence, seeking restoration when human divisions have caused harm to your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy. God of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations. Halt the violence between countries and on our streets and inside our homes. Heal the wounds of prejudice and embolden all who strive for peace. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or in any need. Comfort all who suffer and heal the sick. Visit those whose pain is hidden from us. Help us encourage those who lose heart. Strengthen and renew us with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, God of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship. Set our gaze upon things eternal so that in thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend your grace to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy, God of the ages, in your goodness, you have sent us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We give you thanks for those saints who now rest in your eternal mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray together as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our service now begins. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>